Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Akatsuki Naruto x Kashina x Tsunade, Shizune x Kurenai, part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video, so let's get into the video, hey Kakashi sensei can you help me train for the finals, Naruto asked after resting from his victory in the preliminary rounds against Kibit and Yuzuka, where he vowed to win for the sake of his friend Hinata Hayuga, the heiress of the Hayuga clan for the finals which is coming up in two months. No Naruto I gotta train Sasuke has promotion to Chunin is riding on him. Winning the only reason you're here in the first place is because the exams require three genin to enter. As a team he said uninterested while reading his porn with Sasuke, giving a smooth grin as he was getting his way. Yeah Naruto Baka just go away and stop bothering Sasuke-kun. The team's resident fangirl, an ex-possible spoil of war Sakura Haruno daughter of the civilian council Hatsukiri Haruno. The girl is considered Kanoichi of the year for the fact that she only passed due to her book smarts, when in terms of combat she's as poor as a first-year academy student, as Sasuke was considered the genin of the year, because the academy instructors kissed his ass and tweaked his grades since the beginning. As he rid himself of the ringing sensation in his head after the near-concussive blow to the skull mixed with her screech, he watched them all walk away as they missed the large burst of color intent, sent their way from Naruto himself. Ugh thought they would never fucking leave. If I had the strength I would wipe out Kanoha and be done with it. Acting that fucking chipper every day is literally killing me just calm down Naruto when you get the strength it will all be for the better when you can take your and get the hell out of here he thought. As he picked himself up brushing dirt off his orange monstrosity he called clothing. He knew full well about his family as his name wasn't just Naruto Uzumaki no. That was the half lie that Suratobi gave the village to keep them close. His full name was Naruto Uzumaki Achiha Namika Senju son of Kashina Uzumaki Achiha and Minato Namika Senju. He also knew about Saratobi and his student Jurei's plan to make him into a loyal weapon to use the power of Karama otherwise known as the Kyobi no Kitsune as they've lied to his god as it had always been became public causing the village save for those who were kind to him to treat him with hatred. He knew it all and when he found out he told the few who he was truly loyal to of his findings. The second exams instructor Anko Mitarashi and her friend Zugao Yuzuki, Hana Inuzuka, as well as her clan, Kurana Yuhi, and Hinata Hayuga with the Raymond stand owner Tuchi Ichiraku and Aim Ichiraku. Like him they were tired of the way the village went south with its arrogance and wanted to see it knock down a few pegs or more so to watch it burn, as the history of the village was erased into nothingness like they betrayed his clan in sabotaging Yuzu's defenses and intended to get revenge for his family. Brushing the various dark thoughts aside, he walks to his hidden training ground to practice his true skills that he kept hidden hidden from the world, as his Shuringen activated forming a six-bladed curved shuriken with a three-pointed star in the center. Before he broke it he had on his right hand to reveal a seal, which brought out an abnormally long katana that was at least eight feet in length. Meditating with his sword placed on his lap he closed his eyes as he earned his breathing as he thought over his skills. Before icing, Itachi went rogue she trained him in secret since he was a child, and because of her training, she taught him all the forms of the shinobi life, though his actual skills lied in the shinobi arts, and lying of course. She always said he was a kitsune at heart. With her help she made him as strong as her when she was in the and trained his Shuringen as she too supported his ideals concerning Kanoha after they made her execute her entire family safe for her brother. As was the request of the village to make more Ichiha who followed the village's command. Getting up he created several hundred clones as he got into his beginning stance as they all charged at him. 0, zero with I saying 0, zero. Are you sure this is where the cutie is? I mean I know leader Sama wanted him but how are we going to get him without the village going into alert? A companion a tall blue skinned beauty who had what looked like gills on her cheeks with two on each with sharp yellow eyes, and a slashed headband ass with a large bandaged sword on her back. As the two wore, she nodded her long midnight blue hair bobbing with each step, as she sat while traversing the trees. Yes Kishi he usually trains here in this hidden training ground, to not have anyone spy on him. That's why has had a hard time tracking him to exact location, but I know he frequents three places his parents home being one. Hopping to another tree, as a serene feeling washed over them she counted off the second, the next being a Raymond stand whose owner's daughter is quite fond of him. As they stopped on another tree when they came into view to see a largely destroyed training ground with a tall blonde haired youth, albeit shorter than his fellow genin, and lacked muscle mass due to poor nutrition thanks to Kanoha, and them keeping a close eye on him. He still had slight muscle to gain a woman's attention should they look. He was contently lying on his back shirtless with his eyes closed, as his headband was clutched in his hand, as a stainless steel onyx lightning bolt was resting on his chest. And lastly the training ground I trained Naruto Kun in since he was a child she said with a barely noticeable smile before it vanished, as she looked to her right to see her partner and friend drooling while looking at his chest. Wow, would you look at him? He's packing some serious muscle. Who would have thought with the fact he wears that orange monstrosity I wonder what he's packing in the basement. She said before shutting up, as Isane gave her a stern glare. She was about to say something until they heard for two to grace me with their elegance, and beauty makes me wonder what I did in a past life to be rewarded so. 
Though I say insensei if I knew you, and your lovely friend were coming I would have cleaned up a bit. She and Kishi blushed looked down to see Naruto himself standing up with a smile, as his eyes were closed. I mean look at me covered in dirt, and blood, my hair is a mess, and I reek of sweat I must look a sight. She gave a soft giggle that sounded like music to his ears, as she said, it's great to hear your witty humor Naruto-kun, but in all seriousness our leader wants you. All humor left his face, as he said, and I'm going to take a shot in the dark, and say this leader is of the Akatsuki, the group who are hunting the Jinchuriki are more so that they contain. She nodded making him frown slightly before he reached for, as he sealed it away, and activated another seal on his right shoulder, unleashing a long black katana with the three pronged extensions on the bladed side, as a long chain hung reaching the ground, as well as its sheath which he placed on his left hip, saying then, if you are going to take me insane sensei, how about as far for old time's sake, I want to see how I fare compared to back when you were originally training me. She nodded, as she brought out her old ambu katana, as she turned to Kishi saying keep an eye out for anyone in case we have to run. The shark woman nodded, as she created a few water clones to look over the area, while interested to see how the fight would turn out. 0 0, Hokage's office 0 0. Sensei the aged cage heard causing him to turn to the window, as his only student inside Kanoha sat outside of. Jureya, shouldn't you be training Naruto? He asked, as Jureya shook his head in a negative, making his eyes narrow. I looked all over the village for him, but I can't find him he must be training on his own. Then he said scratching his chin watching his leader growl. Damn it let's not worry we have two months, and when he comes back you'll take him, as an apprentice, and try to instill loyalty into him. Furthering his drive to be to earn the village's respect he said, trying to keep their plan on the rails. As he nodded, it's Naruto's sworn duty to become their weapon, and to gain control of the elemental nations with them on top, as they rightfully should. The sage nodded before giggling perversely and running towards the closest hot spring, as he smoked his pipe thinking once Jiraiya trains him, I'll have him alter the to make sure every time he taps into the Kyubi's chakra, he'll be struck with thoughts of loyalty towards the village, though I just can't figure out where that boy is oh well, he'll turn up. 00, zero Akatsuki Base 00. zero. Inside the Akatsuki base was a large statue which appeared to have had nine eyes on it, with its hands shackled, as they were raised upwards, as if trying to catch something with its mouth wide open. On each finger were women of notorious S rank, as Kanoichi, and on the head of the ominous statue were two of the women. Both had red hair with black streaks, as the two wore some kind of mask. The shorter of the two masked women said in a deathly tone, as her whirlpool-styled mask covered her face save for an eye hole. The Shota Shuringen with the red lotus and a black sun, do the two of you mind, explaining why the Kyubi Jinchuriki was retrieved with severe injuries. Even though her tone was even it sent a slight shiver down all of their spines, as Aisane said well leader Sama we went to catch Naruto-kun, as directed, and he even knew who the two of us were yet showed no fear. That got a few raised eyebrows, as a Jenna not only knew of two is Frank Kanoichi, but also lacked any signs of fear, thinking she prompted for her to continue anyways he greeted us, and well I think it would be easier showing you than explaining. Forming several hand signs she said Ninpo. Jaka no, ninja art. Mirrors of time. Several screens appeared in front of the woman, as they all saw a surprising sight. Zero zero, flashback zero zero. Wow, would you look at him? He's packing some serious muscle. Who would have thought with the fact he wears that orange monstrosity? I wonder what he's packing in the basement. She said before shutting up, as I say and gave her a stern glare. She was about to say something until they heard for two to grace me with their elegance, and beauty makes me wonder what I did in a past life to be rewarded so. Though I say sensei if I knew you, and your lovely friend were coming I would have cleaned up a bit. She and Kishi blushed looked down to see Naruto himself standing up with a smile, as his eyes were closed. I mean look at me covered in dirt, and blood, my hair is a mess, and I reek of sweat I must look a sight. She gave a soft giggle that sounded like music to his ears, as she said, it's great to hear your witty humor Naruto-kun, but in all seriousness our leader wants us to retrieve you. All humor left his face, as he said, and I'm going to take a shot in the dark, and say this leader is of the Akatsuki, the group who are hunting the Jinchuriki or more so that they contain. She nodded making him frown slightly before he reached for, as he sealed it away, and activated another seal on his right shoulder, unleashing a long black katana with the three pronged extensions on the bladed side, as a long chain hung reaching the ground, as well as its sheath which he placed on his left hip, saying then, if you are going to take me insane sensei, how about as far for old time's sake, I want to see how I fare compared to back when you were originally training me. She nodded, as she brought out her old ambu katana, as she turned to Kishi saying keep an eye out for anyone in case we have to run. The shark woman nodded, as she created a few her clones to look over the area, while interested to see how the fight would turn out. Removing her cloak she had on her old armor underneath that strained against her D-cup bust, as she squared off against Naruto who adopted the same expressionless visage. Zero Zero played the theft atreyu Zero Zero. The two charged, and met in the center, as they were coated in sparks before they distanced themselves. As Aisane created two shadow clones to circle around him, and attack at his vital points, before he stabbed his tenses and jetsu into the ground, and pushed himself away. The two clones who missed him ended up stabbing each other, as Aisane jumped 
jumped back to avoid getting cut, as Naruto used the chain to pull his sword back. Daisane Sensei I asked you to take this seriously I'm fighting you at full strength I would like it if you gave me the full respect he said, as he started a chain of hand signs that for even her were slightly blurred. Futen. Kasaku FK no, wind style. Drilling wind bullet. Exhaling he spat out a flurry of compressed balls of wind that swarmed her, causing her to jump away, only to have Naruto in front of her, as he was about to swing his sword, making her bring hers up in defense, only for his swinging hand to not have the sword, as his left hand caught it, and brought it up only for it to be blocked when a second Aisane slowly walked next to him, as she wrapped her arms around him, and exploded blowing him back. Skidding to halt he looked at his arm to see it slightly singed before another Aisane appeared, as she repeated the process, except it was Naruto that exploded in a burst of wind. She was pushed back as she was covered in deep cuts which were bleeding rather lightly, as a sharp blade of wind flew across the ground, where a deep groove appeared in the ground, as it made contact she burst into a flock of crows, making him curse, especially with the rise in heat, he turned to see a large fireball coming his way making him substitute with the shirt of a jumpsuit, though that was a close one Naruto said wiping sweat from his brow, as a clone appeared, as the two fired a volley of fireballs, and one large one, oh fuck he formed a series of hand signs, and said Futen, Kamigami no, wind style, shell of the wind god. When the barrage of fire came they caused a huge explosion that dispersed showed him using his left arm to shield his face, as it was burnt up to his shoulder. Fighting the pain in his arm he pointed up making her look up to see another Naruto with a shuriken being tossed in her direction which she ducked under missing both Naruto's smirks. From that there was another Naruto who threw several shuriken which had ninja wire on them, as he directed where they went, and wrapped around her before the shuriken embedded themselves into the ground. With the main wire between his teeth he thought thanks team for the technique forming a few signs he sent out a large dragon made of fire as it skimmed across the wire, hitting her only for there to be a log in her place. Dumping away he missed a volley of kunai, and shuriken, as he ducked under a strike with her sword, as he kicked her in the stomach, and threw another volley of compressed wind, while coating his sword in wind, he swung the blade, as another blade of wind sliced the ground this time landing a serious injury on her. The two were physically exhausted, and with the on Naruto his reserves were cut drastically, and were about to pass out. She said well Naruto it seems you're about to collapse why don't you give up there would be no shame in it. Smoking he said nah I'm good, but if you want to give up I won't think any less of you I seen Chan. Smoking she brought her sword up, as Naruto did, and charged getting into close combat, until he passed out face first with a large gash across the chest. Panting slightly she turned to Kishi who was white eyed, making her ask what. This is just the first time I've seen you actually put an effort into a fight, even though you are still holding back quite a bit of your strength still, but for him to make you work for the win is still an accomplishment she said with a fanged grin, as her companion rolled her eyes in annoyance. Let's pick up his sword, and let's get out of here alright. Leader Sama wants Naruto Kun, and she's never been this forward in anything neither of them have I seen said, as she picked up Naruto being cautious of his wounds, even though Kishi didn't show it she was patting on the inside, as she watched I seen pick up Naruto while she grabbed his sword, and followed quickly behind her, 0 0, stop music 0 0, 0 0 Akatsuki base 0 0, all the Akatsuki could do was stare wide eyed at the images they were shown, as one of the two zombie sisters, as I say a woman with white hair that was cut on one side with the other coming below her ear, and over her eye, while it all came below her jaw, the cloak was open showing her chest was covered by bandages, and a black skirt that had a long slit on the side that gave mobility, and showed she was wearing bandages to cover her modesty with a rope pulled in a loop attached to a triple bladed side. She said damn Gaki's fine even with that funky seal weakening him, he's still a baddest to fight icing, as long, as he did even, and on fair ground, and those are muscles I would love to feel. Getting a groan from the girl next to her who had a tan tone with multiple stitches on her with her sclare being black with yellow eyes, said ignoring the possible pedophile she got a fuck you katsu from her partner, as she continued. However he shows promise even with the handicap if he could be given more training, he could even go as far as to be stronger than leader Sama she said, as she looked at the two on the head. What are you two intending to do with him? You never really specified why he was so important she asked, as the red hat said. We were going to tell everyone the plan when he came to, as one of Mayu's paths will bring him in she said. As she looked over to the second red hat with multiple piercings on her body, with metallic purple eyes with six rings going outward from pupil to sclare. She nodded saying he's still unconscious, but give him time he has suffered a bit of chakra exhaustion. Thanks to Orochimaru using that Fujin on him, it gave perfect chakra control over his beyond cage reserves, although it also reduced set reserves to a low, but thankfully we removed it, so his chakra is restoring itself. The dark haired female nodded saying good alert us when he does wake up so we can start. She nodded, and closed her eyes using her abilities to overshadow the path she assigned to watch over him, as she admittedly found him to be rather attractive, though other than the Fujin, and the seal containing the nine tails, she felt there was something off about him, before she checked him over, when a hand gripped her hand tightly enough to hear the bones crack. 00 Akatsuki Base Barrack 00. What are you doing, and who are you? She heard him say with his eyes still closed causing her to gasp slightly, not knowing he was awake until she flinched when he squeezed a little harder making her answer. I'm Mayu Uzumaki Kashina's cousin, and member of the Akatsuki. 
After you passed out I sing, and Kishi brought you back here to get your injuries treated, and to get that seal taken off your body she said relieved when he released his grip. I'm sorry I tend to keep my guard up around suspicious surroundings, and did you say Uzumaki? I thought they were whipped out during the third war he said sitting up with a wince, as she helped him into a sitting position, as she sat on the side of his bed. As far as I know you, and I are the only Uzumaki alive, but I question why you have blonde hair when your name is Uzumaki. She questioned when he pointed to a seal on his scalp that wants me to bear a resemblance to my father who was the fourth, so the people would be further enraged, so they would take their anger out on me, so they could further mold me into a tool, so he can take over the elemental nations, as the container of the strongest taking the field he said looking at her before a slight smile came to his face. Though if I do wonder what it is you all want with little all me he said standing, as he looked down to see he was now wearing a pair of sweepings, as he raised a visible eyebrow the blushing redeed. Um what clothing you were wearing was damaged, and I was assigned to change your clothing, and tend to your injury she said, getting an appreciative smile from him, which caused her to blush slightly before schooling her emotions, and return to her stoic personality. With his smile still in place he said well nonetheless thank you anyway so I guess your leader wants to see me for something. She nodded, as she closed her eyes again before she opened them again, and told him to follow her, as he complied following closely, as he has yet to fully recover, and found walking difficult. 00 Akatsuki Base 00 Later Sama he is on his way, Mayu said opening her eyes, as the dark haired woman nodded, as she looked at the red head, who was practically vibrating with excitement for everyone who sees this wondering why they will soon find out. I brought him Leader Sama the redeed set before vanishing, as the soldier Churiki stood in the middle of everyone, as the girls openly ogled him, as they all slightly frowned seeing that head muscle, but it was hardly noticeable due to his malnutrition. After a few moments of awkward silence he said with a slight wave of the hand yo, getting over their mental tirade about his poor health the leader with the spiky black hair, said hello Naruto Uzumaki Ichiha Namika Senju, I see you've already made quite the impression with Aisin and Kishi. Giving a slight smirk he said, as I've told them, I must have done something in a past life to be graced with such symbols of beauty. And yes I saying Chan had told me you all wanted me for something which I would guess involves the overly imposing statue with the eight open eyes. She nodded saying that is correct. You see Naruto our goal, as you might not know is to acquire peace in the elemental nations, and to do that is to stop the bloodshed in the lands. He nodded, as he said yes, but to do that you would need to take away the village's main boasting point, the Jinchuriki. But even with that alone there is the leaf village, as a whole save for a few inhabitants. Even though he, and the others couldn't see it, the two masked Kanoichi's eyebrows were raised with the red hat saying how so Naruto. And exactly what do you mean when involving the leaf? Stretching with a slight wince he said, since the first and second died the leaf has been power hungry, as they've done everything they could to bolster their strength going, as far as to disguise themselves as another village just to weaken their enemies to deal the final blow themselves. When I was a naive child I found some damning evidence in the case of a little black book in the hookage's office with his plans since when he was a mere genin in hopes of making the leaf village reach the top of the ladder in Kanoha, and all others licking the heels of even as to have me be conditioned to become a mindless pawn, and para so I'll do whatever the village says he said, unsealing said little black book with a gold leaf insignia etched on the front which he probably tossed up. As they read it more came to light the assisting Iwa, Kumo, and Kiri in the downfall of Yuzu, the possible plans involving the Jinchuriki to be under the leaf village's sole control. The more they read, the more the killer intent flooded the base. He nodded saying you see what I mean about Kanoha. Though since I've lived there for a few years there are a few clans who would be willing to assist us due to some of the things that has done to them in the past. The woman with a Venus flight trap on her shoulders whose skin was split between white and black said, What is it that they've done to Naruto-kun? Looking at her he said, Whenever the village has a prosperous ninja i.e. the clans for example Isin who showed promise, decided to either retire or do something that the Hokage council didn't agree with, they've done something they weren't too fond of. Grabbing the book he read a few examples with the Inizuka Tsum chans husband Koga wanted to retire. But he had the most skill in their clan's jutsu and techniques, but the council weren't too fond of it, and sent him on a suicide mission, while claiming Tatsum he ran into trouble, this trouble being the Kanoha being at the location, as both he and his partner were killed. Reading another he said, and another example being Hinata-chan's mother Hinako wanted to end the separation between branches, but both the council and the Hayuga clan her husband included, found this undesirable, and poisoned her during childbirth, hoping to mold their last daughter to their image. And lastly Yuga Yuzuki's fiancé was a promising swordsman that if his health wasn't failing, would have possibly been capable of giving the seven swordsmen of the Miss possible Arachi team a run for their Ryo. But that's the thing even without Tsunade such a simple problem like a misfire on a poison mist, causing the poison to last in the lungs, would be simple for even a beginning medical ninja. Daisane said seeing where this was going picked up so to keep him under their thumb, knowing that if he got better he would retire, and marry Yugao, as she too would retire to raise a family. To prevent this they kept him ill. He nodded saying that's right although Baki of Suna just made their job easier, as he killed him when he listened in on the plan to invade Kanoha, with the assistance of Sound who is the main cause, as a certain snake is spearheading this with Sasuke, as his secondary focus. What of my brother, and how is he? 
she asked as Naruto sighed. I seem to be blunt. Your brother is an arrogant, self-centered, power-hungry prick. Since the Ichiha massacre, he's been treated as Kami's personal gift to the world. People give him personal training from various people. He feels everyone should bow to the might of the Ichiha, and all others are beneath him. To be honest I seen Chan if he keeps his attitude I do intend to kill the fletchling, as I've read that once he reaches of age, and awakens the Shuring into the next level they'd make him the next, and use his eyes to keep me in control. And waging an all out war with Kanoha at the reins he said seeing her frown before nodded, reading the bid on using Sasuke to breed more complacent that she had to follow the leaf village's whims like some loyal lapdog. He turned his focus to the two masked women, as they hopped down now standing with him at their chest height he said. But one thing comes to mind. If your focus is to get the Jinchuriki why mention all this to me? I mean you could have extracted the nine tails from me, and do what you intend to since you already got the other eight, and why is it that the two of you are staring at me so intently? The Redeed said why would you think we are staring at you? He shrugged saying during this whole conversation you two have been staring at me rather closely for what reason I don't know. But the two of you have been staring so intently I think I'm developing burns on where you've been looking. The two looked at each other when the Redeed asked what do you know about your family relations, and what exactly makes you an Ichiha, and Senju. Raising an eyebrow he said, my Senju blood comes from my dad's side of the family, as he is the great grandson of Taburama Senju, and civilian woman named Karanamakis, and your mother's side. The dark haired woman asked, my Chiha blood originates from my mother Kashinu Uzumaki, who is the granddaughter of Kurigami Chiha, and Akisuku Uzumaki he said before the dark haired woman said, she's my great granddaughter to be correct, and yes Kisuku is a loving man, you almost look like him she said, removing the mask showing the supposedly deceased Kurigami Chiha with her arms active, making him go wide eyed, as he looked at the red hat only for his heart to stop, before him was a red headed woman with a heart shaped face with a shuringan, that had a red mosaic of a sun with a black lotus on the front, with both on a black background, she hugged him saying I've missed you so much Naruto-kun. White Eyed he said, but I checked the place you were buried, how? Kurigami said it helps when you know the blood clone to take a person's place. With her being weak from birth it would be impossible to defend herself, and you from the village, and who knows what depraved things they would do to her. So when everyone had yet to get to you all, I took her to heal, and train her. He nodded, as Kashina said oh my baby boy look at what they've done to you taking away your beautiful red, and black hair. Brushing her fingers across the seal on his scalp she destroyed it causing his hair to change growing down to his lower back, as it was spiked with it having black streaks, while the rest was predominantly red. Even the marks on his face were changed to being rectangular, and black, as his complexion changed slightly, as his skin lightened to where his tan was barely noticeable. His shuringan also forcibly activated, as it bled turning into red six-pointed shuriken, then grew a black three pointed star, as he shuddered. And that is the most uncomfortable thing I've ever experienced ever. But how did the seal affect my Shuringen, and it only affects my appearance? He asked getting a shrug from the two. Bidding serious Kurigami said now to tell you about why we're after not only you, but us, as well. Now it is true we want the tailed beast, but it's to make a new Jubi which will be contained. He raised an eyebrow on his now stoic face saying, but this includes me, how? I mean I know I have the DNA of all three clans capable of containing A, but what makes me so important that neither you, mom or even I sing could take the position. He raised a good point many of them thought, as all three are from the same clan, and both had an ability to control the tailed beast. You're the linchpin because you are the direct descendant of the sage himself. All you need to do is awaken that blood in you to increase those strengths, Kashina said, getting an understanding nod from him. Okay I can see your point, but one thing he said getting a raised eyebrow. What is it Naruto kun Kashina asked, what are the odds things could go wrong? I mean you're taking it that's been inside me since birth, practically saturating my chakra with yaokai to where it's nearly 80% yaokai if not more so. What could stop me from oh I don't know he paused thinking, maybe going up like a pile of explosive notes. He shouted, as his head grew to that of the statue making the women's sweat drop. I guess Naruto can learn how to use Aruka's big head I seen said, remembering Aruka who was another one of his guards along with her who took their job seriously, as he made quite the impression on them, as a child. But both of their hair blown back wide eyed Kurigami said there's nothing to worry about, as we've spent years preparing for this just leave everything to us, and we'll handle everything. He looked them both in the eye before relenting, as he said, so what do I have to do? The last thing he saw was of the two Chiha before his, they nodded, as they removed all things of use from him, and tossed him in the statue, as the last eye opened. Will he be okay? Kashina asked getting a comforting pat on the shoulder from her fellow Chiha. Oh if he has a never say die attitude then he'll be fine. But when he's stable enough we're training him for the finals. I'm sure you'd love to see your son hand everyone their asses on a platter right? 
she said getting a grin as a response. That's my girl Kurigami said with a small grin as she wrapped an arm around Kashina's shoulder before they went to perform the same series of hand signs as the eyes all started to glow white. Zero zero hours later zero zero. Dog I see passing out is going to be a normal occurrence just so long as I don't wake up naked with a hangover in another woman's bed. Dog I still Oanko chan for that he said coming to with a hand to his head before he covered his ears due to the increase in noise. Can someone tone it down he said as the noise died down when he opened his eyes the place was in shambles. The statue was destroyed from the head up with craters and scorch marks everywhere. When his eyes landed on them he went white-eyed as everyone was injured with a few call wounds. What the fuck happened here? He said alarmed as they turned to him. Well you see when the process finished there were a few unforeseen accidents. Kashina said with a sheepish grin before she shrank back at the glare. Yeah I see the craters and the destroyed statue. But that doesn't answer why you all look like you just came back from war he said. Seeing them all shift uncomfortably. Anyone going to speak? You're starting to freak me out. And why does everything seem off? He said, as Kashina said. You see Naruto Khan the process went without a hitch. Except you didn't become the Jinchuriki for the ten tails she started making him raise an eyebrow. The things went without a hitch, but I didn't become the Jubi's Jinchuriki what happened then. He thought before he felt something brush across the ground making him turn around and see something black with red lines running across it. As he grabbed it only to flinch when he felt his hand touch the furry object. Reaching for it again he felt his hand grip the object as he traced the object from where he was grabbing down to see it coming from his spine with nine others next to it as his eyes whitened. What the hell? He said grabbing his sword that was stabbed into the ground next to. As he looked at his reflection, his eyes were like maze, except the space between the rings were black, as the rings were royal purple with red tomoe calling nine total, and on top of his ears were two wolf ears. They turned when Kurigami said, as they tried to catch the sound, as Kashina said there was a bit of a hitch you didn't become the Jinchuriki, but you became the Jubi thanks to a blunder on our side during the hand sign process. When some of us went for Inu we used Hori. Focusing chakra from his eyes the rings constricted turning white, as they glowed he said, so I became the Jubi instead I'm the descendant of the sage and the second 10 tails this is this is fan fucking tastic seeing them give him worrying looks he said I'm fine so what are we going to do now I mean I've got to prepare for the exams in two months starting tomorrow as tomorrow is the start of a two month waiting period Kurigami said it's obvious you are still a genin even though you're already a high A rank low S rank shinobi but with your new abilities, it's going to take some time to grow accustomed to your new senses and skills mostly the uses of your EMS and these new eyes Hisei said so what are you going to call me I mean they're a mix of all three with a hell of a boost, especially with your transformation. Seeing him tilt his head with his eyes closed, made the girls find this to be rather cute, as his ears flattened while his tail swayed back and forth. I'll call them the Tengoku no Mi, Heaven's Eye, he said reactivating them, as they changed back when he focused more, and activated the EMS, causing the symbols in his eyes to grow, with the shuriken being white with the star being black. A little arrogant don't you think? Katsu asked getting a raised eyebrow from him. Hey, was the first thing to come to mind. Do you have any better ideas? He asked getting a negative from them all getting a smirk from him in exchange. Clapping her hands Kurigami said now that the naming is out of the way we're going to work you into the ground Naruto so be prepared because starting tomorrow we will personally introduce you to hell. All of them had a small sense of satisfaction seeing his face lose color slightly before telling them all to get some rest as to prepare for his training. Naruto was about to head to the room he was sleeping in when Kashina grabbed him by the shoulder and dragged him towards her room getting odd looks from the others before Kurigami came to her great granddaughter's defense. Hey, don't give her that look. Kashina's been denied 16 years of her son's life. 16 years she'll never get back, and besides you know he is the last male of Chiha, Senju, Namikis, and Uzumaki, as she wants to bear his children, it's her choice she said, watching him walk with her. Hell I've seen the way all of you ogled him. I may just join in if you'll have me maybe even Yuzukich-sama will want a piece of him she said with a grin, seeing the girl's color slightly before she vanished in a swirling vortex. Kishi looked at and said so how big is he? Not even looking at her she created a chakra rod and said that big. Before they could pester her more she walked away with her blue haired companion as the others went to their rooms as well to plan out the new Jubi's training schedule. Zero zero, Kashina's room zero zero. Oh this is so great getting to hold my son again I haven't done this since you were just a baby. Kashina exclaimed happily, as the two of them were in her bed with her wearing a pair of loose sweepings and a low-cut shirt, as she held her son. He was blushing, as he had his arms around her waist with his tails wrapped around her, as well. But the reason he was blushing is because his mother was pressed up against him with her chest against his. I'm happy to have my mom around too he said looking down with his eyes glowing in the dark which she was thankful for, as her blush was intense feeling his muscles. Oh my god. He's so fucking toned, and his chest I just want to feel him against me like this in forever. 
but he's my son, although I haven't done anything to be considered motherly to even register. As a mother in his eyes she thought sadly, before feeling his breath on her causing her to look up, as he was unconscious. She brought her face closer to his till they were an inch apart before stopping I, can he's my son. Although Kano had to take away our chance to be a mother, he might not feel the same you won't know unless you try bitch. I guess one pack won't hurt of course not, and if he likes it, then he likes it after all. When we reveal ourselves his eyes didn't leave our body, till we hugged him. Closing that final distance her lips lightly connected to his own before she wrapped her arms around his neck with one leg coming over his until she felt something pull her closer, as he depended the kiss making her eyes widen, as she saw Naruto's eyes were now wide open. Separating he said huskily even though we can't be mother, and son I would be happy to be with you Kushi-chan, but how about we get to know each other, huh? With tears in her eyes she nodded kissing him repeatedly, as she continued to tell him how much she loves him, before resting her head on his chest with one of his arms being wrapped around her waist to bring her closer, as the two fell into a blissful sleep. Hello my new notebook, it's Naruto here. The girls thought it would be a good idea to write stuff down, be it random thoughts to ideas, and reminders, so I figured I'd give it the old Uzumaki try, and see where this goes. Over the time of my transformation, and joining the Akatsuki I got to know the girls, and my great grandmother, and mother. To be honest they're all amazing women with quite some backstory, as they all put me through the ringer while training. But it wasn't all that bad, especially when they caught me playing some music which they- During the first month the girls said I was already high at a low S in skill, but with my training, as I was already skilled into jutsu, but now from Kushi-chan and Kurigami home they said I could now throw S rank around like they're going out of style. Mei-chan started to train me in the Rinnegan's abilities, and the ability to animate bodies to use, as they would have use of one of the paths, as she demonstrated when she had me attack with A, and had one absorb it. Hisei chan took to teaching me how to use a scythe which I learned rather easily, and made a blade that turned into a scythe. Katsu-chan even took to teaching me old things that haven't been seen since the third war. Kishi-chan took to training me further in water, and wind which were common in the mist village. Konan-chan, a blue-haired beauty, taught me to be calm in combat, and use my opponent's anger against them, as she said, an angered opponent is an easy opponent. And that was the truth if you could get under your opponent's skin or bring them down the battle would sooner turn in your favor. Kushiheim being the Uzumaki she was trained me in Fuenjutsu, and the use of the Uzumaki, and Tajutsu style, and even went as far as to have me sign both the cousin contract to her Hydra summons, but also dad's clan summons, as well, although with me having the sage's fabled Rinnegan, I could always sign more at least that's what Meuheim told me. After he started learning from them he had some clones stay behind to train in their arts, and from the clones memories during the second month. I'm going to have my work cut out for me. She even went to train me in our Uzumaki special chakra, and use of the chakra chains was a pain in the ass to learn, but it's useful to use when restraining an enemy, and draining them of chakra. Yuri-chan trained me in stealth, and poisons which admittedly I was fairly good at. I mean I am by no means a professional, but adept enough to make some pretty effective poisons, and neurotoxins. Isane chan and Kurigami-chan trained me in the abilities of the Sharingan, and the use of Katen, as well as the Ichiha Tajutsu style. Sumiko Haim trained me in the use of puppetry which while it's something I don't use, as it doesn't seem to fit my style, it got me thinking of different ways to use a puppet. I wonder if that would work anyways. And lastly Deidre Chan trained me in tactics while getting under your opponent's skin was a good thing. It wouldn't do any good if they had the advantage because your opponent knows the landscape and every vantage point that came with it. She had a saying. Keep your opponent on edge and keep them unaware. You do that and keep them moving so you're getting them to where you want them to be. Of course I didn't just train in the basic stuff, but I made my own form of technique. It is with the use of the creation of all things I could make blades out of my chakra, and spiritual energy that I called soul blades. I still had a few kinks to work out before they could be considered combat ready, so I decided to practice it, as much, as he could so they could see combat, and have shadow clones work on that while I was training with the others. And lastly I also trained dad's serration to the point neither the kunai nor the marker were necessary, and used my to make a variation of that called the flash step and made techniques that required no chakra or hand signs he likes to call keto. It seems I've been coming up with some interesting ideas, and since it's spiritual energy which when focused with color intent, it is rather impressive effect, an intimidation tactic, as Kushi told me that it feels like the Shinigami was gripping at her heart, and made it difficult to breath. Apparently when I use it the force that hits them practically brings them to their knees. Some of them say I could kill them just from enough pressure alone. I decided to call this spiritual pressure since unlike killer intent that affects the mind spiritual pressure hits the soul. Another thing I am immensely grateful for is the fact that they got me clothes that don't make me look like a walking neon sign. I was so grateful that I gave all of them a deep kiss which I think they were rather grateful for. As well he of uh, this fox still got it, although I may need to place some anti-intruder seals just in case to my door. Looking towards my bedroom door in worry, seeing a couple pairs of eyes peek through a crack in the door. 
Those girls who are less rank Kinoichi that could wipe out a village with no problem, made me realize they are still women deep down when they crawl in my bed at night, sometimes two or three at a time, not that I mind really. Although the girls seem to be far too comfortable with themselves because when they join me in my bed, some of them are either choosing their underwear or nothing at all. It gets awkward when they somehow pull me into their chests. Never in my life save for Anko, and the girls back home did I have a harder time controlling my hormones than this. Well it seems I gotta go journal my break for the morning is over, so I'll see you either tomorrow or the day after for another update. Jana. 002 month entry log 00. Sai hey my notebook of thoughts and ideas your 10 tailed friend Naruto here. When Kushi chan said training was a pain, she wasn't lying. The Leviathans are amazing, especially Surin, Water Lilies, the daughter of the boss of the Leviathan contract, and Tigris, daughter of the boss of the Tiger contract. Those two were the, the Leviathans were rather aggressive summons even their Tujutsu style is something to be afraid of, but they were frightening to say the least. The Tiger White Tiger Clan is a frightening sort with their Tujutsu, and Bijutsu from what I've seen, while their Ninjutsu were a close second comparatively. But both of their training was by far the most difficult, but uplifting. The natural energy makes me feel tranquil like I'm finally at peace, and have nothing to worry about. Both of the clans were happy that I became their summoner for a twofold reason. One being they haven't been summoned in generations. And the second being the toads, have been gloating about soon having me become their summoner or some such nonsense being their child of prophecy he yeah right. Another thing I've come to see is that both daughters have some affection towards me which their parents obviously noticed. Have you ever been given the you hurt my daughter speech from a creature a hundred times your size, and wait. It's scary, as fuck especially when compared to me I'm the size of their fangs, and claws, that does not instill confidence, and I'm 6'4 so you can see where I'm going with this. But when I brought up the fact their animals their mothers, the bosses, told me all summons of the competent ones know how to form a human form which they are even capable of bearing children, and all I can say about Surin, and Tigris, is to sum it up in a few words hot damn. The two of them chose to become my familiars, and were trained even further by their mothers to fight alongside me. And if they weren't training with their moms they were training with me. And if we weren't training we were eating together. And if we weren't eating we were bathing or sleeping together. I have to admit for their animal forms they were rather tall. Surin was about a half of her mother's massive size, while Tigris came to about a little past her mother's stomach when she stood up. But they could shrink so when we traveled they stayed on my shoulders or on a large crawl I kept on my back. The time it took to master both of their training was something well intimidating for some was a learning experience for me. Even their clans came to see me, as family, and to acknowledge my ascension to Sage. I was gifted with a coat similar to my father's, except it was made from Leviathan scales with it being black with sharp grey flames, and a sword made from Surin's mother's claw she had dubbed Sanga El Long Katana with a purple jewel at the end of the hilt. And from the tigers I was given a bladed lance made from Tigris's mother's fangs, as the blades at both ends retracted, while I kept it secured in a holster on the small of my back. I may keep all my weapons held by storage seals on my person. I'll think about it. Anyways both the girls get along rather well too, I guess it's because like my girls back home, they agreed to share me or it's because of their predators. We also trained in combination techniques since Tigris had a wind and fire affinity, while Surin had a lightning and water affinity it's safe to say that's also a side project, since we're still not quite in cinch in performing that meshes three techniques together, especially with the fact I can use every affinity. But well since their moms bonded them to me their own chakra reserves have grown rather well. I mean they were already pushing in reserves, but now they had enough to compare to a tailed beast in the amount they had. Another thing the two of them are very clingy and territorial when it comes to me. A few of the female summons tried coming on to me, and that resulted in getting attacked he oh man, that was an admittedly funny sight. On a serious note their mothers told me that when the toads find out about me being their summoner, there may be conflict. Although I have doubts about the toads winning against them since they are stronger than the toads and snakes in terms of power. At this very moment Surin and Tigris are waiting for me to join them in bed. And apparently the girls back home were messaged by the bosses telling them about the relationship situation, and they don't mind in fact they're happy. So better finish this up, and get some sleep. I gotta leave bright and early tomorrow so I can make it on time for the exams. So till next time oh journal. Jana. When is he getting back? He has to be at the stadium in a couple hours, Hisei said getting a series of shrugs from the others, when a poof of smoke caused them to look and see Naruto. He had grown to an impressive 6'4 with his hair done in a braided ponytail, reaching his lower back with his bangs coming down his now fat free face, with some of it coming over his eyes, nearly blocking them from view, as he gained aristocratic features with a feminine quality, as his eyes were now white without his usual black sclare, which was concealed by a. He wore a pair of black style pants with black tape, and black tape that was wrapped around his feet, and a grey muscle shirt with a sleeveless purplish black high collar, zip up kimono top with a deep red rope style belt done around his waist, holding the sheaths of his tense zanjutsu, and masamune on his left hip in a special sheath that held the entire blade, thanks to a seal he created. Along his legs were several pouches full of kunai, and shuriken with another set of pockets holding different tags.
attacks. On his right hip was a large sword that had a purple jewel in the hilt of the sword, showing his mastery of the Leviathan contract with a serpent-style tattoo flowing on his right arm. On his left hand was a seal holding his gay-bladed spear with his black trench coat with silvery white flames that resembled scales with a large scroll on his back that was gray with the white tribal design of a tiger and Leviathan on his back. On the scroll was an orange tiger the size of an adolescent tiger with brownish-yellow eyes holding a strong gaze and a blue-gray Leviathan with gold eyes and a third eye on her forehead resting on the other end that coiled itself around the scroll. While on his left arm was a seal holding his special sword side combination weapon. Grinning he said sup ladies you miss me. They all smiled before each of them gave Naruto a kiss when Kurigami said Welcome home Naruto-kun before you left, I wanted to give you this. Pulling out a large black gun by with two sets of six white rings on both sides with a seal that connected to his chakra allowing him to create a robe. Handing it to him he said which he probably sealed away in a scroll in his pouch. This is amazing Kurigami Haim thank you. She grinned before getting serious. That's good to hear about Naruto-kun since I made it from the same materials used for mine. Now I wanted to give you some limitations. He nodded, as Tigris shrank before jumping to his shoulder. As Kurigami said first you are limited to only the Sharingan and the Rinnegan. The and the combination of all three are forbidden, although the Rinnegan gives the same abilities of the so that's partially why I'm forbidding you from using it. Nobody knows about your heritage, not even the dots so if they call you into the chambers and ask just say since you were born an orphan, nobody knows who you got it from. He agreed relenting to that, as she continued next you're limited to the Manjakyo aspect of the Sharingan. And lastly you cannot use your new experimental technique unless it's absolutely necessary. But sage mode is forbidden for the time being. Everything else is permitted yes the Rasengan and Horatian included whatever excuse you use for it is fine. Since the is a simple chakra can Again he nodded before he was kissed on the forehead. As he was given an headband with a black cloth that he wore around his neck out of view under his high collar. As it was also hidden by a well placed wall his leaf headband. That had a scratch across it. That was concealed with an illusionary seal. Making it seem normal. Before he left he said quick question. How did you all get this in the first place. I mean the villagers had to have noticed something if they went missing. Kashina said we just went to the Biju's resting places before they were sealed and grabbed something that came from them that contained all of their energy like a fang a scale. Everything contains a soul even if it's a fragment which over time would cause those fragments to gain their own consciousness. He nodded saying thanks well wish me luck girls I've got a tournament to win. Flashing out of the cave Hisei said he's going to slaughter them isn't he? The others nodded when Yurei created a giant screen, making them all turn to her making both halves shrug. We thought everyone would like to see Naruto Kun fight in the finals, so we created several clones to act as eyes and ears in the village to show us everything. They nodded watching him appear at the outside of the arena as he made his way inside. 00, zero Kanoheg's M Stadium 00. zero. Will Naruto Uzumaki and Niji Hayuga please come to the center of the stadium? I repeat will Naruto Uzumaki and Niji Hayuga please come to the center of the arena? Gemma shouted, as Niji stood in the center with a smug face. It seems Uzumaki has failed to arrive so Niji he started after announcing the match when he heard. Ha, and I wasn't even given a 10 second warning makes me wonder if they would have been given a whole 4 rounds to get here if it were him. They all heard making them turn to see Naruto standing next to with a blank expression, making the women in the arena blush, while Niji and Gemma jumped, as he just appeared out of nowhere. Name? He asked making Naruto give the same blank expression making chills go down his spine, as he was given predatory glances from the tiger and Leviathan next to him. Come now Jemisan what other 16 year old Leaf Genin has whisker marks on their face. He said blandly making him nod before looking at the who nodded. Then the first round of the Chunin exams will now commence between Naruto Uzumaki and Niji Hayuga. Fight. He announced, as the sun shined away. The two squared off, as Naruto took off his coat, as he had Tigris and Surin go to the side of the stadium with his scroll. A change of appearance makes no difference. You may, as well submit now you are destined to fall at the might of the Hayuga, as the failure you are Niji said arrogantly watching Naruto crack his neck getting loud sickening pops, before he vanished from everyone's sight when Niji got launched into the wall. Wide-eyed everyone turned to see Naruto with his hands clawed like his feet, as his hands were smoking with his palms extended he said, Please Niji if all you're going to do is flap your gums, then give up now, and not waste my time. It makes me wonder if that's the only thing your clan is good for anyways really. Getting up Niji charged with his active, as he tried to hit Naruto's, as Naruto slapped away each attack or danced around him, continuing to get under his skin even more. I'm waiting for you to make a blow I would have believed a prodigy would be better than this, but I guess they would give even a brain dead fish the title these days really Naruto said with his eyes closed, continuing to dance around each strike when one landed making him smirk before it fell when Naruto went up in an explosion, pushing him back with his clothes singed. I would have thought the almighty Hayuga's clan had no blind spots. Either you're posturing these things or are you all just that sad to fall for a simple bunch and die Bakuha, great clone explosion. This truly isn't as fun as I was expecting it to be Naruto said disappointingly while inside he was satisfied to see Niji's face turn red with fury. Shut up. 
he exclaimed, as he blindly charged at Naruto, as he didn't notice the growing grin. 00, zero Akatsuki base 00. zero. Naruto-kun sure knows how to get under someone's skin. I've never seen a Hayuga's face get so red, Katsu said, as the others agreed with her when Naruto delivered a clawed hand across Niji's chest. 00, zero Chunin exam stand 00. zero. Sensei, what style is Naruto using? Tenten asked, as Guy said watching Naruto move. That style is one that helped give birth to the Iron Fist, and even the Inizuka's Tajutsu. The tiger style, he said getting everyone watching's attention. What? Kiba exclaimed watching Naruto not take a single blow, while Niji was continuously beaten around like a ragdoll. That's right. The tiger style was an old style tojutsu that hasn't been seen since the sage's ring. Channeling the primal fury of the tiger one can deliver devastating blows, and graceful evasion. In fact the tiger style was the first of the styles to exist, and feared, as a single strike while his hand is the way it is, could cleanly tear out your throat he explained, making everyone go white-eyed learning the dope knew such a style. But wait that still doesn't explain how he has such skill or his change in appearance, and what's with those animals that are just sitting there Ino said, as they turned from the fight which was obviously one-sided to see the tiger resting on the scroll, and coat with the leviathan coiled up, they could be summoned. Where he got them from we may never know, and, as for the transformation he could have awoken some form of bloodline. As for the rise in skills it could be that he had skills to begin with, but chose to keep them hidden for such a moment like now Suma said, watching Naruto laid Niji on his back for the hundredth time. Zero zero back on the floor zero zero. I have to say you're rather pathetic Niji. What happened to that Hayuga greatness you would go on about? I mean earlier you said I would be at your feet, but it seems the sandal is on the other foot huh? Why don't you save yourself any more embarrassment or you can continue while I tear another couple pounds of flesh from you for hurting Hinata Haim Naruto suggested getting a snow. And what's so special about that failure? She's weak, she couldn't even protect herself against a ninja. He exclaimed when he was kicked across the face when Naruto planted his foot on his chest, slowly cutting off his oxygen. Yes, and here's the standing question. How's it a 3 year old's fault for being unable to defend herself against a 20 something with combat experience and spades? How's it her fault Niji? Or better yet let me bring up my own questions, and we'll see if you can answer those okay. He asked not noticing Niji was starting to lose consciousness. How is it possible that a clan of a hundred clansmen minimum with eyes that could see through walls, were incapable of noticing her kidnapping until he was nearly in lightning country? I mean someone had to have noticed something unless your clan is, as blind, as you are ignorant, because I find it highly it seems Niji can't continue anymore you going to call the match. He said looking at Genma who was slightly intimidated by the cold look in those silvery white eyes before nodding. Why ya winner of the first rounds of the Chunin finals Naruto Uzumaki. He announced, as everyone booed while well the daimyo, and visiting dignitaries frowned hearing the slurs and insults, as everyone started to call him demon especially the water daimyo, and fire daimyo who heard about his exploits and waved. The water daimyo said, this is quite shameful to have a village treat a young ninja with such discontent isn't it? The fire daimyo nodded with a sigh. Yes, and you wouldn't believe the shameful actions I've heard about in a little book a plant woman gave me about the happenings here. After one thing I've already made my decision at least when I settle something after the exams when Sir Toby and I have a chat. The water daimyo nodded, as she said I would like to sit in on this meeting if that's fine. The boy shares a strong resemblance to an old friend of mine. And if they're treating him worse than what we see on the surface, I may just ask you to move him to a recently rebuilt village. He nodded watching Naruto walk back up the stairs with his coat and summons on him, as they made their way to the contestants booth, when the fire daimyo said to his side Kai, I need you to keep a close eye on the black and red haired boy, but stay hidden this village is acting strange, and I want to understand why such a promising boy is treated so poorly. The black masked ninja nodded after dropping to the ground before vanishing, as he said again, and Zane stayed near Sirotobi. What that boy said about special treatment makes me cautious. If he does attempt to give the Chiha special treatment then tell him I will take away 30% of their funding for such conduct. The blue haired male nodded before vanishing, as the man sighed, as the water daimyo chuckled softly. Daimyo's work is never done how old friend. They never are my they never are he said, as the woman next to him gave a barely traceable smile, before watching the next fight between Shikamaru and Tamari, resulting in the Nara to forfeit at the last minute. Zero zero cage booth zero zero, or Hokut Sasuke Chiha, and Kakashi had a caveat to return. What should we do? A random said when Sir Toby was about to speak they heard, then he should be disqualified. If he can't be on time for a fight then he isn't mature enough to advance through the ranks. Turning they saw the same blue haired shinobi, as Sir Toby glared. Who are you to tell me what to do with my ninja? Saratobi demanded when he showed his fire country insignia the same insignia his son wears. Personal guard to the daimyo Zainer saw SS rank ninja of Kusa. He saw young Uzumaki about to be disqualified, even though the rules state he has to be given a window to appear on time. 
Your ninja disregarded this, and almost eaten he forfeited his place if the boy didn't come the moment he got there he said, making both the cage tense. And Lord Minus said if you give this Sasuke boy special treatment, then the village will lose 30% of his funding for favoritism he explained gladly, as he stared the aged cage down before he relented, as Zane turned to the floor. So tell Genma that the Chiha has forfeited his place, and get on to the next match he said impatiently to the unnamed who nodded before joining Genma down below, as they announced the results, with the crowd booing, as Sarutobi growled silently much like the Kazakij. 0 0, contestants booth 0 0. You know I can't help, but wonder what a masked ninja that isn't doing here. Naruto said silently while scratching Tigris's ear, as she turned into Putty, as she draped herself across his lap purring. He heard next to him softly Lord Minus wanted me to keep an eye on you, and learn of your life here in the village, as he grew curious due to the actions of the populace here, and how they acted when you won. Naruto nodded, handing him a slip of paper when he heard his name being called after Shino's opponent forfeited. He said go to the hospital, and go into the document room. I have my own storage there. It holds all my info if your daimyo is curious, although you may want to stay near the for the time being. I get a funny feeling coming from the Kazakiage, and it isn't the warm and fuzzy kind. Patting Tigris on the head she got up as she hopped on his shoulder, as he sealed away the scrawl before they vanished in a burst of sound missing the Chuckle Kid Scott style I'll give him that much. 0-0 Stadium Ground 0-0 The next match will now commence between Naruto Uzumaki and Sabaku no Garafai Genma. Started when a large wind kicked up, as leaves swirled around when it started to clear. 0-0 Akatsuki Base 0-0 Hey I say isn't that your brother? Kishi asked getting a groan from the elder sibling who watched, as her brother emerged back to back with Kakashi wearing a pair of Anbu style pants with calf high sandals, wearing a white kimono top with opera style fingerless gloves, with a purple rope style belt holding A, as he stood there smug. Oh dear Kami please don't remind me she groaned getting a snigger from her partner, while Kuragami shook her head in her hand. I think he decided to come at the wrong time because Naruto-kun and Gar aren't too pleased, Mayu said watching the screen when they all looked to see Naruto's eyebrow twitched, while the rest of his features remained bland. Gar on the other hand, and had a dangerous glare aimed at Kakashi, and Sasuke, as Kakashi was looking at his smut, as Hisei commented, I'm rather interested in watching those two crash, and burn. They nodded before returning their focus to the screen. 0-0 Stadium Ground 0-0. Are we late? Kakashi asked when Genma nodded, pointing to Naruto who had an equally bored expression, as Gar had. Yes, actually the Lord was told to disqualify the Ichiha because he couldn't bring himself to be on time for his match. In fact your appearance is interrupting your last stu- Naruto. He asked watching Naruto slowly turn his focus to the before Naruto groaned audibly before nodding. You wouldn't mind giving your spot to Sasuke would you? He asked getting a snort from Naruto. I would mind actually. If you weren't such a useless case, and didn't let your porter the fledgling's ego blind you too, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. So yes sensei, I do mind since after all Sasuke and Sakura are the only reason I'm here, since the exams require a team of three. You remember those words don't you sensei? Naruto asked with a slight smile before he was gripped firmly on the shoulder by Kakashi, making Naruto look on with a bored expression. I didn't say it, as a request Genin it was a demand I'll leave the field he said when he felt something grab his throat to see Naruto's white eyes narrowed into slits. But we do it this way, Haddock. Since you just embarrassed the village in front of visiting dignitaries and daimyos who formed treaties with us and gave them the impression that such actions as yours are allowed, you started making Kakashi go white-eyed, seeing you get your second genin and join your only remaining student and sit down and shut up or I'll rip your throat out with my bare hand the choice is yours. Naruto suggested making him shiver from the color intent before grabbing Sasuke and left the field. 0-0 Akatsuki base 0-0. Alright Naruto-kun, that's telling him. Kashina sat jumping up and down, as the other's sweat dropped watching her reaction. The family is one odd bunch, Isain Katsu said sympathetically getting nods from the others, while Isain groaned audibly. Don't start she said with a snort looking at Stitch Job Kanoichi, as the others sniggered. 0-0 Stadium Ground 0-0 Now that that's out of the way we can begin so just fight already Gem announced, as he left the field, as Naruto dodged a spike of sand. He not wasting any time, you. Fine I was hoping for a real challenge Naruto said, as his Sharingan spun in excitement while Gar grinned. Girls, let's have some fun shall we? Naruto said looking at Tigris, and Surin who nodded when another spike came at them when a large puff of smoke came blocking everyone's view. 0-0, Arena Stand 0-0. What's going on Sensei? Choji asked getting a shrug from the bearded. I don't know Choji, but I'm more interested in how he got this good. I mean from what I heard from Haruno who bragged about their sensei shooting down Naruto, saying that the two of them were just stepping stones for Sasuke to get to the finals, if he didn't have a person to train him. How did he get this goody ass when out of the smoke came Naruto with two women. The first had brick brown hair, as it was done short with her bangs, framing her face with two ribbons in her hair, that made them seem like ears, as they held two braids that hid behind the bangs. She stood slightly shorter than Naruto with tiger stripes on her body with two on both shoulders, and two, as they came around her brownish yellow eyes with two dots over them. 
She wore a sleeveless red karate top with black lining, and a black and gold bamboo tree lining with black gloves and steel knuckles that had spikes on them. She also wore grey shinobi pants with a beige belt wrapped around her waist, like the bindings wrapped around her legs with bandages done around her feet like Naruto's. The second stood slightly taller than Naruto with her steel grey hair done in a high ponytail that reached the middle of her back. While the other woman held a brutal elegance this one had a natural beauty, as she had light makeup on with black lipstick and soft grey eyeshadow around her gold eyes. She wore a sleeveless silver and blue style Chinese style dress with a pair of grey tight pants with black slippers and a matching top underneath the dress, as both were carrying an adachi. Wow those two are cute, Choji said getting nods from the men and the women admittedly, as they watched the three brandish their weapons. 00 Stadium 400. Girls, I think it's time we got serious huh? Naruto said, as they nodded with Naruto taking off his jacket, as it created a large crater before the three vanished when a wall surrounded Gaara blocking Naruto, and the others from landing an attack before they vanished again, as wall after wall came up with every attempted attack. They pairing the three Rikon verged at the wall, as Naruto looked to the others before nodding, as he charged down the wall when two larger tendrils of sand came at Naruto which he maneuvered under, as he gave a straight punch, as his fist connected to the wall, as more spikes formed in the wall when Naruto vanished appearing behind him, as he kicked Surin who appeared above him kicked him in the chest, pushing him down with Tigris, giving a double palm thrust on his descent when Naruto and the others fired a series of collaborative comprising of wind, fire, and lightning, causing him to be caught in the center of a large inferno. 0, zero stand 0, zero. Damn whoever trained the kid sure did get him up to snuff. I mean he was moving at level speeds there. And those he used haven't been seen since the last war, it's safe to say Kakashi you threw away a gem, because this kid has some serious skill I mean he obliterated last year's genin of the year into jutsu alone, with the use of a single clone. And now this if I had to rank him he's at least an A-rank Asuma said with the other agreeing with him, while Sakura snorted. Please he's a weak clan less nobody, and that's how he will stay, she said when Inu said. If that's the case then why aren't you down there then Sakura? I mean you make it seem like you're stronger than him with your sensei's training, so surely you should be down there instead of him right? Tenton asked making the hesitate, but right your sensei never trained you in anything while letting you and your team enter a dangerous field where the possibility of dying was outrageously high for the unprepared, and yet the clan less nobody is fighting while you're up here with those who couldn't make the cut she continued watching the put her head down. She snorted saying thought so, as everyone noticed Kakashi and Sasuke had their Sharingan active in an attempt to copy his techniques. 00 Arena 400 That had to do some lasting damage right? Naruto asked, as both Tigris and Surin shrugged when they saw him stand up from where he landed, as flakes of sand chipped off him, causing Naruto's eye to twitch. Right sand armor forgot about that nifty little annoyance, I guess we're just going to have to hit harder, then won't we? Naruto said feeling a little put off by Gaara's deranged grin. Feeling the ground rumble beneath them they jumped when Naruto was the only one to be caught in a large dome made of sand that slowly started to compress. Soon a hand in Kushizashi, sand style. Inverted impalement, Gar announced when the dome had large spikes come out from the outside, as they started to collapse in while Surin and Tigris attempted to break down the others. 0, zero in the stand 0-0. Zero, zero. Had the dog should have just listened to his betters, and let me fight Sasuke said, as steam started coming from the dome. I wouldn't start bragging just yet boy they heard making them turn to see a black haired youth wearing a mask with the fire country insignia on his vest. Shot, Asuma said Kai. What are you doing here? Turning his head he shrugged. Lord Daimyo seems to be rather interested in young Uzumaki, and I have to agree with your assessment earlier of Asuma. And, as for your comment boy I wouldn't be so smug because you would have been in worse situations, now I suggest you watch, and see what a real warrior is. Pointing to the dome they also is start to expand before it exploded by a large column of black fire before it died down, showing a Naruto who will forever be ingrained in their memories. His hair was disheveled, as it specked out with a bang coming over his eye, while his visual pupil had shrank to a pinprick, as his fangs extended past his lower lip, with tiger stripes forming around his eyes just like tigers, while his shuringen changed to a red six-bladed shuriken. Both of his shirts were slowly deteriorating from the black flames encasing his arms, while his pad legs were destroyed up to the shin due to the same fire. You see? That dope, as you all label him, has the potential of being a great leader who won't fall to his foe. That look of determination in his eyes is proof I may just make a suggestion to Lord Minis to offer the boy a position of the 12 Guardian Ninja, since you quit Asuma he said, leaning against the railing. Sensei, do you know him? You know asked getting a nod from Asuma. Yes you know this is Kaishan SS rank ninja from Taki. In the 12 Guardian Ninja we have a ranking system, and with our rank he's number 2 while I was number 8. Honestly Kai, and Zane who's rank number 1, could easily handle an entire village of ninja on their own. I could be considered a high A rank capable of defeating at least the lowest rank on my own he said, getting white eyes from everyone else. Nodding Asuma said so I take it Zane is the reason the brat didn't get to fight. 
Nodding his head he said distastefully while looking at the yes after hearing the comment Naruto made, and seeing, as Genma was going to disqualify the boy before he could be given a second call, Lord Minus figured to have a tight leash on things, and gave everyone their fair shot to fight the boy here didn't because he, and his sensei figured he was above the rules. Ignoring Sakura, and the rest of Team 7's glare he turned to the floor, saying now watch boy you just might see what a real ninja is. 0, zero Arena Floor 0, zero. Naruto Kun are you okay? Tigress, and Surin asked, as Naruto slowly tilted his head towards her with his magicum spinning hypnotically when he extinguished a flame on his arm, showing he had scales coating them, as he massaged her cheek with a slight smile. I'm fine girls although I'm not too keen on losing my shirt, and pants he said, as they sighed in relief. Now how about we finish this fight quickly I just want to rest, but if Yuri is right, and with her info she is, then we're going to have some trouble on our hands he said, ripping off the remains of his shirts, leaving his chest bare. They nodded, as Tigress got in the same stance, as Naruto, as her hand hands, and feet were encased in blue fire, while Surin pulled water from the air, as it swirled around her. You two ready? He asked getting another series of nods from them, as Naruto charged forward leaving a trail of black fire following him, while Surin and Tigris destroyed every tendril that came Naruto's way, as he got in close using the heat to turn the sand into glass. Getting in close he formed a seal on his unlit hand, as five flames formed on each finger before he slammed it into Gaara's abdomen Gajo Fuin 5 element seal. As Naruto thought the moment the fight was over barrage of feathers began to fall from the sky, as Naruto, Surin, and Tigris focused their chakra, and dispelled it he said Tigris, Surin, I want you two to summon your clan's strongest to deal with the enemies in the village, and to have them get the civilians to the bunker, while the others defend the academy, and the hospital try to get as little casualties on our side. They nodded before dashing off, and he saw the same black masked ninja from before Sake hit the villages under attack. Do you think you can handle things here? He nodded, grabbing his sanga, and Tensa Zanjetsu said, give me a mission, I'll complete it. I'm going to take a guess, and say you're going to assist them. He nodded, as Naruto reached into his back pouch, giving him a seal saying here then you're going to need this. It allows you to displace it for a moment allowing you to enter with ease for a short time. I'll get Lord Minis and Lady Mai to a nearby bunker. He nodded before grabbing the seal, and ran to the cage booth, while Naruto created an army of shadow clones, to spread out around the village when Kakashi, and the other ninja appeared. Naruto what's going on, and what did you give that man? It appears my hunch about Orochimaru was right. He impersonated the Kazakiage in an attempt to kill the Hokage. I gave that man a seal I developed that will allow him to enter that barrier to assist the hookage. For now let's not split hairs we got an invading army on our hands, and we got to defend the village Naruto said, as he started to go to the booth holding the daimyo, when he felt Kakashi grip his shoulder. Now wait just a minute here you're going to tell me what's going on Genin, and you will show proper respect, Kakashi said when he was kicked in the side of his head, feeling Naruto's footstep on his chest, as they all saw the air get thick with pressure that was rolling off Naruto. Everyone froze when they saw the look in his eye, while Kakashi was especially petrified, as Naruto said. Firstly Haddock, if you would get your head out of your ass you'd see that civilians are in danger. I would think your sensei taught you to deal with the important matters. Secondly I don't have to explain shit to you, since you've done nothing to make me consider it help you struggling to breathe, as is just from my spiritual pressure, as is is. He foxy chants funny Kenny is this night chant strong enough. Everyone heard, as they all looked around for everyone to be shot, as to a child who couldn't possibly be any older than 6 to 7 years old at the least. She had pink hair that was flat with a crossbone hair clip in her hair, dark pink eyes, and a blush on her cheeks. She wore black pants with tape around her ankles, and a deep red kimono top, as she sat on his shoulder. Surprised at the fact a child got the jump on him he was on edge saying kindly well sweetie what are you doing here? It's dangerous, should I get you to the bunker? She, smiling, a large shadow started to cast over the mole, as they heard yeah this is the kid. The kid who has the eyes of someone who's experienced the darkness of the world, but is willing to fight for his beliefs kid behind you. Slowly he turned to come face to face with a large man's chest making him look up, as his eyes slowly widened. The man easily towered over him, as he came to his staggering 6-7, as he wore a pair of black akama, and a kimono top with a tattered white haori. His black stringer hair with a long scar over his green right eye, as he had an eye patch over his left. On his shoulder he carried what little remains of the cantana he had, as it was shipped, and jagged with a gold guard that extended inward from its center. Wide-eyed look from the little girl who was smiling at him to the imposing giant staring at him, as the gears clicked in place he said, No way, what's Kanpachi Zaraki, and Yuchiro Kusajinshi doing here? You know these people, Naruto-kun. Hinata asked getting a nod from the boy, as his eyes never left the giant. No, not personally. But more so from their reputations in the bingo book, as to his class Ronin. 
Although Yuchiri Chan is possibly as ranked due to her connection to him or the fact she's killed several men just from her killer intent alone, the god of the flea on sight order he said. As everyone stared at the six-year-old child sitting on Naruto's head, patting him on the head with a smile with white eyes. But I'm curious, as to why two well-known swordsmen are doing here and when you're normally known to stay in your territory in Tetsu. No Naruto said, watching the man grin before pointing his sword at him. I saw the fire in your eyes during that fight. I want to fight you a fight to the death he said, with his grin still ever present. Well Yuchiri nodded enthusiastically now on Hinata. A shoulder. Wait why do you want to fight the dope when you can fight an elite Sasuke said with Sakura nodding. Well the others groaned audibly when Kenpachi cast him in side glance, making the boy step back. Why would I fight a child who can't even stand in my presence? Kenpachi said watching the boy struggle to breathe making the others snort. I'd like that chance, but can we do it once we deal with the threat at the moment? We gotta get the daimyos to safety, and take out the other enemy ninja speaking of Kankuro. Tomari he said when both Suna Genin came down with their sensei. What did you do to Gar? Tamari demanded checking over her brother. I place a five element seal on him. It seems whoever placed the last seal made him mentally unstable, so I was going to fix it after the exam scene, as the seal was making it impossible to sleep he said, getting raised eyebrows from the two swordsmen. Can you talk to ninja later, and speak in a way for the ninja literate to understand? Kenpachi asked getting a nod from the little pink haired youth now sitting on Anko's shoulder. To put it simply whoever put the first seal on guard did a piss poor job on maintaining it, or overloaded the seal with too many commands, and made him mentally unstable, and incapable of going to sleep without going on a homicidal rampage. As a result he explained, as the two started to nod. I used another seal to knock him unconscious, and keep him, as such until I can fix his seal, so not only would he have better control over his sand, but he could also sleep without having a mental breakdown or the insatiable bloodlust he's had he said getting a no. From the two, as he kneeled next to Gar, as he got out his ink and paintbrush, as he started to adjust it before finishing. Sitting back his palm started to light with the same five flames again when he slammed it on the same space he did the gajo, as he lifted Gar, and gave him to Baki who nodded. Alright tomorrow you, and the rest of your team are to go to assist my summons at the hospital. Hinata-chan, do you think you, your team, and Anko-chan can deal with any civilians my clones miss? I've got them spread around the village taking out enemy ninja he asked getting nods from the group of seven before they ran out the stadium. I can you and your team get to the academy and make sure the kids get to the bunker one of my clones were dispelled and they're in need of assistance he said, getting a nod when he saw Naruto grab Lee and put him on his shoulder. Where are you taking Lee? Tenten asked causing him to turn to her. Trust me when I say he's safer with me and the others. Don't worry Lee is in perfectly capable hands he'll be fine now go he said, getting nods from her sensei, and later herself while huffed. Asuma, I need you, and your team to come with me. We need to protect Lord Minus, and Lady Mai. You and Yuchiri are with us we're going to need, as much muscle, as possible he said, as they all nodded while Zaraki had a sadistic glint in his eye. As they started to head to the daimyo's booth they heard Naruto Baka what about yes. Rolling his eyes he said, help around the village it's more than likely buildings collapsed, make sure to get the injured out of harm's way, and get them to the closest bunker entrance near your location. Running they all reached the daimyo's booth, while ignoring the glares he received from his old team. 00, zero daimyo's booth 00. Zero. I hate to say this, but I fear I'm getting old, I used to be able to handle myself easily Minus huffed holding his bladed lance. I did say you lack stamina my friend Mai said good naturedly, as she blocked a sword with a clawed gauntlet, before slashing another at the throat with her dido. Yeah yeah yes Mortis I get it I'll get back to my training he gripped, as he ducked his sword strike to the back of the neck, while he missed an enemy coming from behind him which was sent flying past him, and my catching everyone's attention. Sorry to interrupt, but we felt you could use the assistance Naruto said, drawing his tenses and jutsu, as the others soon followed, as he put Lee down against the wall. On Naruto Uzumaki I have got to say I was rather impressed with your fights Mai said, as Naruto gave her an appreciative nod thinking with this many enemies here, I may just be able to pull off a test run. You guys might want to take a few steps back just in case Naruto announced as they complied, as a purple-black energy discharged off his outstretched hand, as he chanted, Sleeping Crest of Turbidity, Arrogant Vessel of Lunacy, Boil Forth and Deny, Grow Numb and Flicker, Disrupt Sleep, Crawling Queen of Iron, Eternally Self-Destructing Dull of Mud, Unite, Repulse, Fill with Soil, and Know Your Own Powerlessness, he chanted, as Eno started before Choji slapped his hand over her mouth, pointing at the enemy ninja seeing black boxes starting to form around them, Pad number 90, Kurohisugi, Way of Destruction number 90. Black Coffin, he said, as the enemies were completely encased when screams of agony were heard, as when they dispelled what remained was the skewered remains of the enemies. Naruto what the hell was that Ino asked in both horror and intrigue at the technique, as none of them felt the use of chakra, but they felt some form of energy being used. I'll explain in a moment he said jumping in front of the two country leaders, as a small house sized fireball came bursting through the door, as he extended his hands, as to everyone's surprise he absorbed the fireball, 
and threw kunai at the man's head killing him. Kneeling he clapped his hands above his head, and again at waist level, saying Hachijim Sungai, eight joined twin cliffs. To everyone's surprise the room glowed yellow, as they watched the enemy just ran past the room without even looking getting raised eyebrows. As his sensitive hearing he heard Ino's heartbeat speed up. Something wrong Ino-chan? Naruto asked opening one eye slightly when he saw her blush while looking at his eye and body. You are you don't have a shirt on Naruto-kun, and your pants are pretty much non-existent she said, making him raise an eyebrow before looking down to see she was looking at his eight pack, making him chuckle. Yes yeah, sorry about that during my time training, I would end up having my clothes destroyed, so I just got used to not having clothes on. Hold on he said grabbing a scroll on his back pouch, and released its content showing a spare shirt that was white with a purple black high collar, zip up kimono top, and grey pants, as he threw down a smoke Or I'd ask away the enemy won't know this room even exists, not can they hear us so ask any question he said examining Lee's arm and leg. First, what was it you just did? I didn't feel any chakra being used, but it had a similar feel to it, and secondly what is with your eye it went from the shuringan into some six pointed shuriken, then it turned purple, and it got rings on it. Ino asked, as she watched him continue to look over the injured genin, to answer your questions in order. What you sense is an energy I call Ryukuru spiritual energy. The reason it feels similar to chakra is because it is one half of the energy used for chakra. The two techniques I use fall under their own category. They all fall under the main category of Kido or Demon Way he started, as he created two clones to deal with Lee, as they each two to his injured arm and leg. Pointing to the yellow energy that could be seen outside the door, and the viewing balcony he said, the first is back at my way of binding. Techniques that can immobilize an enemy or have an effect besides a direct strike. Pointing to the remains of the enemies he said, then we have had more way of destruction. These are attacks that deal damage. And lastly he pointed to the two clones whose hands were glowing green, as they tended to Lee's arm and leg saying, and lastly we have Kate Returnway. They don't have names or incantations, as they just simply heal the target. So you're healing him? If that's the case why didn't the hospital do it? Choji asked getting a raised eyebrow in exchange. I'll take a shot in the dark you don't frequent the village save for your family's compounds or the high priced district run by the civilians. He said getting nods from them all making him sigh. Well I'll put it simply the civilians fuck the village to hell, as the civilians line their pockets, and waste the money used for the ninja, and the shinobi stores, and instead waste it on unnecessary things like hot springs in every civilian family home he said, getting a raised eyebrow from Asuma. And my father allows this. He said getting a snort, as the ring teenager looked at him. Assuming no offense, but the title of Hokage it just doesn't have the same worth, as it did back during the Nidane, and Shadame's rings. Your father is a figurehead just making money for the village, and hands out missions that's it, and he knows everything that's going on, and doesn't do anything about it he said, as he was grabbed by his collar into a And what's that supposed to mean you little brat? He demanded getting an uninterested gaze. Exactly, as it means Asuma-san. I mean have you seen the way things are? Civilians have the ninja in their peril doing senseless shit they could do themselves. I mean really painting fences. Pulling weeds. Yes having highly trained killers are better use wasting several months doing someone's chores when we could spend it training, and doing missions that could benefit the village, and get in more pay. But they want someone to do it for the meager pay they got us working for then pay the children in the academy, as a way to learn how to work with different people, before they officially became genin or a kid looking to make some easy yen he said, as he grabbed Asuma's hands, making him drop Naruto from how hard Naruto grabbed it. Brushing his shoulder he said, as Ino blushed now getting back to the lovely blonde second question. Now, as for my eyes, my fair, lovely blonde. It was during the two months I spent training that I realized I had the Shuringen and Rinnegan, the Shuringen possibly from my mother's side of the family, and the Rinnegan is a big question mark. What you saw was my Shuringen second form the Magicum Shuringen. Surprise Eno was about to say something when a puff of smoke came between them, as a small white tiger cub appeared, as it said Naruto Nai I have a message from Tiger Sneed Chan. Smiling, he said, what is Bayako? She says the enemy has began their retreat with that snake guy who was severely injured the Sandame is injured, but still alive, thanks to those two masked ninja, and that seal you gave that one guy to enter the barrier to assist them the little tiger said, as Naruto scratched behind his ear. That's good to hear. Where are Tigris, and Surin? Are things okay on their end? He asked getting another nod. Yes, they're still picking off leftover enemies. I'll summon them over to here when they finish up on their end he said, getting a knot before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Bayako cute cub, and Tigris's little brother named after the first white tiger of their clan. We can all leave when they get here he said when another seal array appeared when a larger plume of smoke appeared. Hmm, it seems Naruto-kun's been having some fun huh? They heard an alluring voice say when the smoke dispersed showing Tigris and Surin in the company of two older women who had a similar look to them. The first woman standing next to Tigris was taller than Naruto, while she was slightly shorter than Kenpachi, or at least to his shoulder. Her hair was snow white, as it reached her knees with brown blue eyes with a pair of tiger stripes under them. Her skin was porcelain white, as she held a regal elegance. 
She wore an all-black bodysuit that hugged her features showing her curves, while her feet and arms were bare, and a red rope sash around her waist on her feet were a pair of equally red bandages like Naruto's and an ornate black oak box staff. This was Ran Mao Queen of the Tiger Clan, as she gave a fanged grin that matched her daughter's. Next to Surin was a woman who looked similar to her wearing a pair of black akama and gray sleeveless tight Chinese top with gold lines spread across it. Her hair was a coal black that swept over her left eye, while her right was an emotionless crimson red that made you feel like she was staring through you. Like Ran Mao she held a similar regal appeal with a hint of poise that you'd see in someone of high social standing. On her hip were two long katana that were encased in a black sheath with a leviathan engraved in them. This woman is Shiva the leader of the Leviathan, and Surin's mother with an emotionless gaze. As she looked around when it landed on Ino, she gave a soft smile which Ino returned it with a small wave at it. So Naruto-kun cares to fill us in on the situation. Shiva asked getting a nod, as he told them of the events that had transpired, as they listened before nodding. Alright shall we go? We need to reach the Hookage Tower there is the closest bunker as we can reach he said. They all geared up with Naruto placing his swords in their sheath, when he dispelled the barrier which Shiva had to whistle. I see you've got those Kekai working Naruto Kan she said, getting a nod from Ran Mao, and the others, as they all left the building. Zero zero, outside the Hookage Tower zero zero. It's not that far only a couple of yards Naruto said running with the others following behind him, when their way was blocked by a mob of Anbu, and Kanoha Shinobi standing in the way of the way to the bunker. Getting on guard he said, you mind moving we got to get Lord Minus, and Lady Mai, and and lead to the bunker, we still got enemy ninja running around, and the sooner we can get them to safety the easier our job will be. They brandished their swords when they said not a demon. You stopped Ichiha Sama from fighting, and stole his clan's eyes. Sandame was a fool for letting you live, as a demon, and we will finish what Yandame Sama started by fixing his mistakes. Turning his attention to the others he said, keep them safe I'll handle these guys. Ducking under his sword from him he slapped an explosive note across his chest, before kicking him into an oncoming group of shinobi causing them to explode, making Shiva whistle saying maybe it would be best if we got out of his way. Come now granted he's stronger than before, but I doubt he can single handedly defeat a mob of, and high ranking on his own. He is still a gen in a C rank at the least, Asuma said when Ran Mao pointed back to the fight, showing Naruto had already decimated several without drawing his weapons. I think that would say otherwise, Sirito. We trained Naruto Khan for a month, and he defeated the two of us who have had hundreds, nearly thousands of years worth of experience in combat. Now I suggest we move she said ducking under a flying kunai, as they nodded, dumping onto the nearest roof they watched, as he ducked and dodged them, as he ripped their throats out tossing them around, as they hadn't noticed the roof was falling apart when Ino fell. Ino? Shikamaru said, as she fell when a fireball came flying at her making Naruto curse thinking let this work. Grabbing a tri-pronged kunai he threw it in Ino's direction, as everyone saw him vanish in a red and black flash, while Ino had her eyes shut, expecting for the to hit her, when she opened her eyes to see Naruto standing in front of her, with his arm bleeding heavily from the second fireball that followed the first. Looking back Ino could see both his eyes, as she couldn't help but stare at his cold soft white eyes, as they contrasted over their midnight black square, before they- his cold eyes softened, as he said you okay Ino-chan? Nothing hurt. She shook her head, making him smile softly before they narrowed before he turned his focus back to the mob who shook from the pressure coming from Naruto, as a large wolf formed behind him with the same eyes as his. Slowly he drew his mass immune saying I could take you attacking me, and that's fine, and I'll just take you down without problem, but involving someone who had nothing to do with this is a step over the line, since you wanted a demon. He closed his eyes, as a large grin formed across his face, when his Rinnegan eyes opened halfway he said, let me give you what you wanted. When it was completely unsheathed he vanished in a burst of static, as he reappeared behind another group, as their heads fell from their shoulders, locking several kunai before coming in quick with a simple swing he cut through an anbu sword before kicking him into another. Zero zero with the other zero zero, you were saying? But I think I could come up with some titles for him. With those flames of his he could be the Kurakami, Black God, Mai said watching him create a wave of black fire, and vanish in another black, and red flash. The Shizukana Dai, Quiet Maelstrom, or the Igao Kume, Smiling Demon, I mean that smile is frightening. Along with that color intent of his, Minus said when Ino, and the others came back up, as she asked, what happened to him? I mean the look he has on his face isn't like the old Naruto I knew she asked watching him when Tigress patted her on the shoulder. That's the look of a person who's lived alone in a place that would rather see him dead than to have anything to do with him in fact the only people who actually like him is that Hinata girl, her sensei, and Anko she said, as Ino looked down remembering their time in the academy and saw he was always alone despite her father and mothers urging her to be his friend she would talk to him from time to time, but her focus was always on the broken child Sasuke. Thinking back when she had asked Sasuke out one time in the academy he told her after getting horribly chewed out and dismissed by Sasuke Inochan, you could do better than someone like him you a beautiful girl who's going to make any man you end up with very happy 
and if the theme is too blind to see and acknowledge a beautiful flower, then that's his loss. She thought maybe I could do better than that duck haired bastard couldn't I. She said quietly getting Tigris and Surin's attention I don't hate him. She was cast a side glance by the two familiars for Naruto when Surin patted her shoulder saying we know also me, Tigris, and the others know you like him and am willing to share if you want him. She blushed getting a snigger from the two of them as they watched him dance around the mob, cutting them down one at a time with cold efficiency as no emotion was portrayed on his face. Is it me or is that what I think it is? Shikamaru said watching him slap his palm on a guy's chest when he kicked the man into the air as he vanished in a flash as they saw a familiar orb except it was black with a white core slamming the first one into his chest he was pushed into the ground when Naruto reappeared slightly above with another Rasengan in the name of a certain Kanoichi Art is an explosion Rasengan Bakuhatsu Rasengan explosion he announced when he slammed the second Rasengan into his chest causing a huge explosion to go off that looked like a giant black and white Rasengan pushing off he landed on his feet with his outstretched hand pulling in mass immune he said evenly come on people you said you wanted to finish what your beloved Yandame started finish it already. Afraid to continue there and when he created a blade of wind as it sliced through the rest of them, making him sigh in exasperation as he burned the bodies leaving nothing behind. Turning around he was hugged by Ino, making his eyes widen before he gently patted her back saying come on we're not far from the bunker. They nodded as they all continued to make their way to the bunker while Kenpachi couldn't help but grin at the thought of fighting him. 00, Hukage's Mansion 00, Lord Minis. Zane said, as he and Kai appeared in front of him, as the others quickly joined them when Kakashi appeared. Now I demand you explain things to Uzumaki. Kakashi said getting an uninterested snort from him, as he picked his ear with a nail before flicking it away. Well Jen and I expect you to answer he continued, as Naruto sighed before blasting him with killer intent, making him sweat. First Hadakai just got done fighting a mob of Anbu, and Jounin who thought that since the village was in a state of confusion, they would get away with trying to kill me, so I'd watch my step if I were you, since I'm in a rather foul mood, Naruto said before letting up on his color intent. Gathering himself he turned to see the same man he saw leave from Naruto before confronting him he said, you what was it that my Jen and gave you. Not paying him any attention, Kakashi was about to strike him when Minis said, who are you to demand one of my guards, Leaf Ninja. I don't believe it concerns you civilian he said, not even paying attention when he was struck in the stomach by a black oak bow staff making him heave. That's the daimyo of the fire country fool. I suggest you show your country's leader the proper respect. Now Naruto can how's your arm? Is it still hurting? Tigris asked getting a shake of the head showing it was now slightly burned and slowly healing. How would happen to the dope he hurt himself being as useless as usual. Sasuke goaded when he was hit by Ino making the other leaf ninja go white eyed. Actually he saved me from an attack by a mob of and when they attacked us. You should have seen him. He fought at least 30 and 20 with ease. When he blocked an attack for me he demolished the rest like they were nothing she said, making the blush an embarrassment. Ah oh, do you hear that Naruto Khan seems like someone has a crush on you? Surin taunted making the two blush. Naruto. How's Lee? Is he okay? They heard to see Tenten and her team run towards them allowing him to nod as he pointed to show Lee was being carried by Shiva. Yes Tenten I told you Lee would be okay and he is. In fact I think he's going to be even better soon with some rest he said with a smile getting a raised eyebrow before he put his finger to his lips in a shushing motion before nodding. Yes, Naruto was quite impressive. In fact I haven't seen skill like that since when Minato and I were on the same team back in the day if he had spiky blonde hair, I'd swear you'd be a miniature clone of him, Minis said getting a snort from Kakashi, who had regained his breath. My lord, surely you're mistaken Minato was my sensei. I know what the man was like, and there is no way this clanless nobody could measure up to him. Surely you saw someone else do those things because he can't do anything without screwing up he said, getting a blast of color intent. I know what I've seen, and I've seen a boy with more skill than a war trained shinobi. And I have to say I've seen just about enough from this village, and I've made my decision when I speak to Hirazan later tomorrow. Naruto my boy I must thank you, and no need for bearing dot I just did what any ninja would do. There's no need to thank me he said getting a shake of the head from my, but that isn't true. We've seen your skill, your ability to take charge, and give commands, and the way you work with your summons, and how loyal they are to you she said, pointing to Surin, and Tigris who stood next to him along with their mothers. And it's safe to say you are by far a powerful shinobi who can only grow stronger, no matter what village you're in. To be honest if this village can't accept what a powerful ninja they have, then they don't deserve you. And I will say this if you, and anyone you take with you can rest knowing you have the protection of all of Mizuno behind you, no matter what village you're in, she said kissing him on the forehead, as she walked away, as she was followed by her guards. I have to agree with her young man. You've done your nation a great service this day, and I thank you. Rest well knowing if you decide to leave this village, you have the support of Hai no behind you, 
as well he said, patting him on the shoulder, before finding a place to rest for the evening, since the chaos is over, while knowing it will only get worse. Naruto and his friends could only watch them leave, while the Naruto haters shot hate filled glares at him, while he and the others yawned. Well I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to find a place to sleep and this has been an exhausting day. I don't doubt I'll have to deal with the council for something stupid he groaned, as Ran Mao and Shiva waved them goodbye, as they returned to their realm while Tigris and Surin followed him. Looking over his shoulder he said, and tomorrow I'll give you that fight you want to Pachi after the council meeting. Most likely they're going to want to speak to me about my increase in skill. Although Kenpachi was disappointed he nodded, as he and Yichiru went to find a place to sleep. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.